Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and you can't really see it, but I got my uh, young Frederick Douglass t-shirt on. You see the, like, you know, the hair, you know what I mean? Let me lean back. Yeah, so, yeah. Frederick Douglass, of course, an abolitionist, a writer, an orator, a political statesman, um, a former, formerly enslaved African that ran away and earned his own, you know, freedom. He manu manumitted himself, you know, uh, wrote three autobiographies that I definitely recommend that you take a look at. The Narrative of Frederick Douglass, uh, Life and Times of Frederick Douglass, and My Bondage and My Freedom by Frederick Douglass. Definitely take a look at those um, to gain more insight into that, this brother's life and also the life of African people during chattel slavery, you know? All right, now let's get into this lesson. Adding and subtracting fractions. Adding and subtracting fractions. Now also, more specifically, adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators, unlike denominators or different denominators. I see a four and a three and a five and an eight. Now, of course, the denominator is the bottom number in the fraction, right? That's what the denominator is. The denominator is the bottom number in the fraction, or it's the number that describes how many total pieces you have all together in the object. Because let me like back up a little bit and make sure you even understand what a fraction is. Because a lot of people don't, you know, um, a fraction is not just a number that's got two numbers in it, right? There's a little more to it than that. Three-fourths, what does that mean? That means that there's an object. Imagine an object. Like, let's say a cake, okay? Well, let, let's say a pie. Pie might be even easier to conceptualize, right? We take a pie, we cut it into four equal pieces. The denominator tells us how many equal pieces we have, right? The numerator, the top number, tells us how many pieces, how many of those pieces we are focused on. So that's what three-fourths means. Three-fourths means you take an object, you take a group of people, you take um, anything, right? And you divide it up into four equal pieces, four equal pieces. Notice I said divide it up, right? Because a fraction also represents division, the operation of division, okay? So you take an object, divide it up into four equal pieces, and we are focused on three. Either three of those pieces of the pie got eaten or three of those pieces of the pie are left, right? But that's what we're focused on, three, three out of four or three-fourths, right? Two thirds, what does that mean? We take an object, we divide it up into three equal pieces. Our denominator is three. So that means we divide it up into three equal pieces. And then we are focused on two of those pieces. Two of those pieces. All right, that's what two thirds means. All right, so just a little background so you at least understand what a fraction really is. Because a lot of people don't understand what a fraction even is. Even So before we get into the addition or the subtraction or whatever, we should at least understand what we're working with. All right, now, when the denominators are the same, Let's say we had three fourths and five fourths. How many fourths do we got all together? If we're doing addition, we would do three fourths plus five fourths. That means we're doing three plus five. All together, we got eight fourths. Simple. But what do you do when your denominators are different? This is like apples and oranges. We can't add these together, right? Not like this, not in this state. We got to do some alteration. Now, there are different ways to, as in all math, there are many options we have. There are different ways to add fractions when the denominators are different. When the denominators are different. I like to use a method I call the Malcolm X method. And I call it the Malcolm X method because we have to go, we're going to do some math in an X formation. In an X formation. So check this out. And you might have seen this method before, you might not have. But check it out anyway, right? So first thing you do is we're going to write a fraction bar over here, right? A wide fraction bar, right? Notice it's wider than these two, right? What I like to do first, I multiply the denominators. Multiply the denominators. Multiply the denominators. Now, by multiplying the denominators, what I'm doing is I'm creating a common denominator, right? A common denominator. Four times three, you got to know your multiplication facts. You know that that's 12, all right? Now, here's where the Malcolm X method part comes in, because I go like this. Three times three, and then a four times two. Don't that look like an X? I just formed the X. So whenever I draw X's, whenever I write X's, whenever I form X's and shapes, I think of the ancestor, Omar Wale, Malcolm X, or al Haj Malik, Al-Shabazz, Detroit Red, whatever you refer to him as, right? Three times three is nine. So I put my nine up here. Four times two is eight. I put my eight up here. These two numbers, right, they are going to become your new numerators. So I do nine plus eight, right? Nine plus eight. No, your addition facts is 17. The denominator doesn't change. When we're adding or subtracting the fractions, we don't add or subtract the denominators. That's another thing I should have mentioned. So you would never do four plus three. Some people that don't ever learn how to 
don't learn how to add and subtract fractions, they might look at this and say, oh, the answer is five sevenths. No, it's not. It's not. But what that does is that shows that they, that person may not have ever been taught what the concept of a fraction actually is, right? Because you can't go from fourths and thirds to sevenths, right? You can change them into twelfths, and then we want to know how many twelfths do we have all together? How many twelfths do we have all together, right? So I had fourths and I had thirds, and what I did is I cut them up into smaller pieces, right? Because a twelfth is smaller than a fourth, right? A twelfth is smaller than a fourth, right? If I got twelfths, the way I get twelfths is like this. I take a fourth and I cut that into three pieces, right? So each of the fourths became three. There's three in each fourth. So I got three plus three plus three plus three. Altogether, that's 12 pieces. Again, the denominator or the bottom number tells you how many equal pieces you got. So I went from fourths to twelfths. I went from thirds to twelfths. So now I can add them up because it's the, they're all the same size. Three fourths and two thirds are different sizes. So we can't add them up. But nine twelfths and eight twelfths, those are the same size because they all twelfths. They're all one twelfth of the whole pie. They're all one twelfth of the whole pie. Nine of them plus eight of them all together, that's 17 of them. Now, let me give you another skill real quick, because this is what we call an improper fraction, an improper fraction, because my numerator is bigger than my denominator. So that means that this is actually equal to a whole pie and then five pieces from another pie. That's why we call that one and five twelfths, because how many groups of 12 can fit into 17? One group. That's where this one comes from. Where did the five come from? Well, after that one group fits into 17, how many pieces are left over? Another five. Because that first group of 12, they're gone, right? And that's where the one comes from. But then what's left over? Because I got 17 twelfths, right? The first 12 are gone. What's left? Five of them. Because 17 minus 12 equals five. And then our denominator is still 12. Because all the pieces are still twelfths. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we that's how we get one and five twelfths. So this is called an improper fraction. This is called a mixed number. Improper fraction, mixed number. Improper fraction, mixed number, right? And all we did was division. We just did some mental math division. That's all that happens when you convert an improper fraction into a mixed number, all right? Let's go down here to this problem. This is subtraction. The method is exactly the same, except we're subtracting the numerators instead of adding them together, all right? Now, I got fifths and I got eighths. My denominators are five and eight. That means I got fifths and I got eighths. So this, four fifths, what does that mean? That means I got an object, it's cut up into five equal pieces. Five equal pieces. I'm focused on four of those equal pieces. Four out of five of them. For this fraction, this object is cut up into eight equal pieces. I'm focused on three of those. That's what three-eighths means. Four-fifths, three-eighths. Four-fifths, three-eighths. Right? So, this is a problem. We can't do subtraction just like we couldn't do addition unless our denominators are the same or unless we're cut up into equal pieces, equal size pieces. So what do I do? Let's go. Malcolm X method. Long fraction bar. Let's multiply the denominators. Five times eight is going to be 40. Make sure you know your multiplication facts. All right. Five times eight is going to give you 40. Then we're going to cross multiply in an X formation. That's why we call it the Malcolm X method. Four times eight is 32. Write the product up here. Five times three is 15. Write the product up here. These are our new numerators, the 32 and the 15. Those are our new numerators, the 32 and the 15, right? So I put my 32 up here, and I put my minus sign, not a plus sign, minus sign, 32 minus 15. Now, we got to know subtraction facts. We got to know how to subtract, actually. 32 take away 15 is going to be 17. You know how I know that? Because I know that 30 take away 15 is 15. 30 take away 15 is 15, Right? So if I know that 30 take away 15, because I know that 15 times 2 is 30. If 30 take away 2 is 15, and then we just add 2 more onto that 15, that gives me 17. So I got 17 fortieths, right? So I had to say, okay, we had to take these fifths and break them down into fortieths. We had to take these eighths, break them down into fortieths. So we had to break them down into much smaller pieces, right? So what we did is we took each of the fifths and we cut them into eight small eight pieces. We took a fifth and divide it up into eight pieces. All together, we end up, ended up with 40 pieces all together, right? For the eighths, we had to take those and divide those up into, divide those up by five, right? To get 40 pieces. So I got 32 fortieths, and I can take away 15 fortieths, 
right? It's like currency, right? It's like we have $32 and we take away $15, right? But if I have um, four nickels and I want to take away three doms, I can't really do that until I convert into a consistent currency. You know what I mean? So anyway, we end up with 17 fourths, right? This is a proper fraction, not improper like this one because our numerator is less than our denominator, all right? So this is a good answer, even though it's improper. It's considered an improper fraction, but a mixed number is cool too, all right? But I want you to understand that um, this method is a popular method, right? But I call it the Malcolm X method, you know? Um, some people just call it, you know, cross multiplying. They just call it cross multiplying. But I like to call it the Malcolm X method because I like to evoke the ancestors' names, you know, um, just like, I mean, that's why I got this Frederick Douglass t-shirt on, you know, while I'm doing a math lesson. But at any rate, when you see problems where you have to add or subtract fractions and you have different denominators, this is a method, this is one of the methods that you can use, all right? This is one of the methods you can use, the Malcolm X method, all right? So go get some practice and I'll catch up with you on the next video. Peace.